Today I figured a little something out, a technique that'll help you add a second host and avoid this nonsense uh, when you're trying to do vMotion. Let me explain that a little better. We've got one host in my home lab. I'm about to add a second host, a second server. If I then try a vMotion, well, I'm gonna have a problem. And the reason is this. This is a Core i7 from four years ago. I'm about to add a Xeon to the mix. So what I'm gonna show you is an easy way to start your vMotions right away without having to reboot hosts. Let's get started. So if I go to the data center level and right click, do the usual add hosts. And I've added an inventory of a few VMs and I can apply a license key that's already in there. And what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna to attempt to do a, a vMotion of the vCenter appliance that I'm running through right now. My vSphere web client is pointing to the vCenter appliance. And I'll bet you'll see an error complaining about the type of server. So right click, migrate, change, next. Okay, open up data center, excuse me. Click on the new entity we just added, the new server, mini host. Watch what happens. It's not happy. Why is it not happy? Okay, and it gives you a, a KB, an article to look at. And here's the article, talking about a table of servers and processors and whatnot. All right, so what do you do about this? Go to the data center level, right click, New cluster. And EVC here. If we scroll down through the list, you want to go to the lowest common denominator. In other words, the old ESXi host has a Sandy Bridge in it. So now that I'm turning that on in the cluster, What would be the next step to get vMotion to magically work to this host, which has no VMs booted, I should point out. What we need to do is move this to the cluster. So right click, move to, home lab cluster, done. What's special about that cluster? Well, what's special is we'll now be able to vMotion to it. So what we need to do is right click, migrate, change, And there you go. We've avoided the need to follow this Zany article. Uh, two Zany articles, actually, the one I showed you in the beginning. It's messy. Now, to finish the job that we started, yeah, we're going to need to vMotion all running VMs that we really don't want to shut off to the new member of this cluster, single member of the cluster. And then when we're done, if we'd like, most likely, we're gonna wanna right click, move this ESXi original server, the Sandy Bridge box to the cluster. So now we have this compatibility where we'll be able to do vMotions between those two ESXi hosts at will without any issues or warnings or whatnot about incompatibility of CPUs. So hopefully you found this a bit of a time-saving measure if you found yourself in the same predicament. And I thank you for watching and for visiting tinkertry.com.